has a pair of games coming up this week, hosting Penn State on Wednesday night at Mackey Arena at 7 o'clock before traveling on Super Bowl Sunday to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. That one will be a 4 o'clock tip-off. Boilermakers coming off two tough losses Friday night to Northwestern, 80-67 to at Mackey, and then yesterday to the Indiana Hoosiers in Assembly Hall, 64-57. The final, Purdue comes into the week with a 13-10 and record. We have three weeks left in the regular season, which means six more games before the Big Ten tournament. Good evening, everybody, from Wolfie's in West Lafayette. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We'll be talking with the Boilermaker head coach up until the top of the hour about Purdue women's basketball. Also, a little bit later on in the show, Ava Learn, freshman from Hyde Park, New York, will be joining us. Uh, the Boilermaker uh, show tonight is uh, on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site, so you can not only listen to us here on Bob FM, but you can also tune in and watch the show coming to you live. And we will have the coach with us. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. Back right after this, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Seven on the shot clock. Back to Harden. Out top here's Layden. Now they go inside. Learn gets away from the defense. And scores and draws. Of that, and she did a good job of just staying focused and getting the and one. Once again, the Boilermakers are at the line for an and one. Jayla Smith back to Brooke Moore. Moore stops. She's covered up by Satterwhite. Gets it to Ellis. Ellis driving. Ellis with a tough runner on the way, and she okay. got the bounce. Okay. Abby Ellis. Brooke Moore. Moore fires a three. Got it. Brooke Moore with a triple. Shaw. Pass deflected, and this time it's picked up by Abby Ellis. Ellis coming down one-on-one -on -one against Rainey. Spins inside, goes up with a scoop shot, and scores. Gets it back to Layden. Layden has yet to score in this one. Madison throws right side to Ellis. Ellis drives with seven to shoot, puts up a floater, and scores. Abby back the other way. JT stops. Throws back off to Harden. Open three. In rhythm. Yes. There we go. Cassidy Harden with the triple. That's 23. She has the ball tipped away by Learn. Here's Janae Terry the other way. Good Terry, wall up. Yes, it was. Terry on the right side to Layden. Back off to Jayla Smith. Her three in the air. Good. Jayla Smith with a triple. In rhythm. 60 to 41. Cats on top. They throw it inside. This is Janae Terry. Terry on the left side. The Smith will try it again. Yes. Six in a row. Jayla Smith with another trip. Their lead. Here's Terry with it. Terry, dump down pass to Layden, who lays it up and in. Defense back, it's, it's pretty much a two on the other end very quickly. Third assist of the game for Burton, and the basket by Hartman gets her in double figures. As there's a three-pointer by Madison Layden. Veronica Burton, 22 points, 19 here in the second half. And I think you're right. I think, except for one three-pointer, Smith goes to the other end and scores all layups. Almost got a steal, and now here's a long pass down, and Cassidy Harden does intercept the pass. Harden back the other way. Long pass off to Madison Layden. Layden with a minute 38 to play out top to Harden for a deep three that's good. In there where they weren't taking great shots and uh, get, not getting good looks. And Just because both teams have to play on Sunday. No. Here's Harden in the corner. Layden, she fires an open three and hits. Madison Layden has scored 10, 8 here in the fourth quarter. Dribbles through it. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. And uh, we've got the head coach with us. Uh, Katie, always tough coming off a couple of losses. I, you have to be proud, though, of the way your team fought yesterday. You know, you got down by 19 points in the third quarter, and they got 8,000 people screaming against you, and the top five team in the country is getting their getting their groove on offensively, and you got down to where they made it, uh, they got pretty nervous in the fourth quarter. I thought your kids showed tremendous fight yesterday. Yeah, we've done that quite a bit um, in, in terms of just, you know, showing the the amount of fight and the amount of heart that our, our kids have. Um, you know, we'll go back to, to Friday. I'll be honest with you, we played 23 games this year. Friday was the only time I didn't feel like we had a lot of competitive spirit as a basketball team, um, you know, for whatever reason. You know, the, the adversity of not practicing, um, just Friday just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And and Sunday was different. And it, it didn't have to be even Indiana. Um, I think we would have had that same competitive spirit. I just think that was – Friday was like, hey, we got to squash that one because yeah. that's not happening ever again. Um, and um, we weren't great in the first half. We struggled a little bit offensively. They got some offensive rebounds and scored on them. Second half, missed some, miss, miss some shots. Uh, they made some shots. But down 19 in a timeout, you just look at your kids and be like, hey, y'all. Like, we got a chance. Mm -hmm. Let's just chip away at this. And uh, we're able to make some shots and, and get some stops and get in transition. But, um, you know, on the road with 8,000 people and you're playing against a, a top 10 team, um, I don't, it, it's hard to come back from 19. Um, yep. But, uh, you know, proud of our kids. I, I love coaching them. Um, it, literally, they're my lifeline. 
you know, it's interesting. You want to see how kids are going to react in that situation. You and I talked last week. The game against Nebraska last week was probably the first time all season you've been in a real hostile environment on the road. You've played some road games, but because of weather and some other factors, hadn't played in front of big crowds. You had a big crowd at Nebraska, big crowd yesterday. And one kid that I thought really stepped her game up and, and rose to the occasion was Jayla Smith. Now, Jayla, you know, didn't make her shots that she wanted to make. Mm -hmm. But I thought from an energy standpoint and just from a, hey, I I'm not backing down here. She was tremendous yesterday. Yeah, the, uh, the little squabble she got into was um, we took her out when it happened because you can kind of see her getting fired up a little bit. But um, I grabbed her by the waist and um, the message I shared to her was like, hey, this is what we do. You're, we are Indiana Miss Basketballs. We come down here and we fight like, you know right, what? Right. And we give it everything we have. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna come back and you're gonna respond for this. And she was really special for us in the second. And I know she missed some layups at the rim, uh, but just her energy and getting to the glass. That kid is playing really well and with a lot of confidence. And uh, I know we've talked about her growth, but you know the she's got a, a bright bright future in front of her. You know, go back to that uh, Northwestern game on Friday night. It was really the second quarter. You were in the game at the end of the first quarter. It was a, a really tight game, but they, they kind of got that stretch in the second quarter. You had a hard time scoring, and they were plus 10 in that quarter, a game they win by 13. I mean, the rest of the game's pretty much dead even. Yeah, we had a, we had a hard time even on the basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing at Indiana in the first half, just a, a really hard time rebounding it. Uh, you know, you tell the kids, like, you think we didn't work on it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, this that's just the next step for us. Um, you know, we fight, we play hard, we do all those things, but the things that we can control, right, those are the ones that, that we've got to do a better job of and just finishing out plays because we do guard really well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just feel like we're guarding for seven minutes of a ten-minute quarter because we yeah. don't get a chance to get out in transition. But, um, like I said, man, this, this team, um, they're fun. Uh, they, they work their tails off, and they're a fun group to be around. Well, and it was a challenge, too. And I know everybody in the Big Ten's had these challenges this year. You had to get the, – the game was postponed. You had to play it on Friday night, which means you only had a day in between that. The, the, I guess the good news, you had played Indiana before, so you, you were familiar with them, and the fact that it was Indiana. You, know, you don't have to worry about getting your kids up for that one. But, um, you know, I thought, I thought again, the, the fight that you showed in a, in a situation where a lot of teams would have folded yesterday, down 19, and you're thinking – you know, this is a game they could win by 30 or 35 before it's over if, if, if you don't get your act together. Yeah, it easily could have gone that way, but that's just not the makeup of our, you know, our team. You know, the, the character of uh, the, the people on our basketball team is just a little bit a little bit stronger than that, and I think we've shown that. Um, you know, we've we've proven that we can play with just about anybody in the Big Ten. Not just with – I mean, we've proven that we can, we can do it, right? Um, just a matter of finishing those off and – um, we, we talk about not waiting and, and wanting wanting to get it done right now, but um, just the next step for us. And, um, you know, we've got a lot, of, a lot of basketball to be left to be played, and, um, you know, Wednesday's a, an important one for us. I spent way too much time last week on the show talking about replays and officials. I do want to ask one question, though, that you were down five with less than a minute to play. You were inbounding the ball. It got tipped out of bounds, and there was, I think, a four- or five-minute look at the replay table. What did they tell you afterward about why they did not change the call? The ball went off Abby, and they weren't for certain if it touched another person. Um, we all know differently, don't we? Yeah, well, you know, as we mentioned, and Jane Schott saw um, Allie Patberg when they broke their huddle. When, as soon as the official pointed that way, she came out with the biggest smile on her face, and you knew that she knew that she touched the basketball. Yeah, and then we talked about this uh, on the show last week, and then even after the game. Human error is part of sports. Yes. You know, and, and, I, and I stand by, like, I hate the replay. I think it stops the flow of games. Yes. Like, you know, like tennis is the only time you should use a replay because yeah. it's either in or it's out. Right. It's, it's right. black and white. There's no gray in between. There's no judgment, you know, no judgment calls. And, um, you know, it, he called it Indiana ball on the field, on the on the court, sorry, and um, couldn't overturn it, right? There wasn't, right. There wasn't refutable evidence, and it is what it is. The thing I would like to see there, and I think they've done it in the NFL, is the replay – basically shuts off after a certain amount of time. You can look at it for whatever it is, a minute, a minute and a half, and then you don't get the picture in it. You have to make your mind up in that kind. And, uh, you know, the, op the, the purpose of replay is to get an obviously wrong call right. If you're looking at something for four or five minutes, it's not obvious either way. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about this. I just – it gives you an out, right? Like, hey, I don't know, so I'm going to call it this way because yes. I know I can go to – I, I know yep. I can go look at it. Yep. Yep. You know, it's, it's basketball. It's human error. Like, that's re there's always that in, in sports, and, and it shouldn't impact a, a basketball game. All right, we'll have more here from the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union right after this. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. This is 
about five to six rebounds per game. She's really been able to step Harden up. Harden drives in, in off the glass and in on the floor quickly. Ellis not wasting any time and the up and under off the glass. So Abby Ellis can really put the ball on the floor. Derry's got to go here, working on more. McNeil, the up and under. Oh, crafty from for Indiana, the true freshman. Terry finds a seam in the lane off the glass. 20, we got a dandy early in this Big Ten rivalry between Indiana and Purdue. Ali Papper, oh, a no look past the goal, but a blocked by. Yeah, thanks, Gwen. It was Tara Masu, and I'm just a little disappointed we didn't get any. It's not yeah. good. St. Louis. Terry hands off to Woltman. She'll finish that time. Second for McNeil. Oh, what a bounce pass to Goldbay, but blocked. Oh, my. Oh, Smith came out of nowhere to reject Goldbay. Trying for the third straight season to sweep the Boilers. Open three is good. Jayla Smith from downtown. Averaging eight three-pointers per game, fourth in the Big Ten. Speaking of threes, Brooke Moore from way downtown. Lob it outside. It's a really good move. Inside and the foul. Abby Ellis taking the contact. Purdue is not quitting. They will not quit. A lot of fight. What an athletic move. Have to try to mount a Purdue comeback. She'll try and contest it. Three and hit. Brooke Moore heating up. Two threes, ten points now. Yeah. Why couldn't you start the one of the games at a, at a different time? I don't know. Ellis, nice move to get some space, and she hits. You just have to hope that you don't have. Terry driving in, couldn't fought finish. Moore left open again, she hesitates, but hits Brooke Moore from downtown. Oh, they left her wide open again. I don't know what Indiana's guards are doing. They keep on leaving. Now let's take a look at some of the comments on Facebook. Uh, Brandon says, good luck the rest of the way. We got a boiler up from Ira in Swamica, Wisconsin. Hello from Sheila in Remington. Love the, uh, your show and this, love this team. Thank you for both of those. John from uh, Pennsylvania, happy birthday. Today is Madison Layden's birthday, right? Happy birthday, Mads. She's here, right? Happy, happy birthday, birthday Mads. Madison. All right. And uh, Peggy from St. Louis. Now, Peggy does have a question. Says, um, I'm sure you've had lots of headaches during your first year. However, how much fun has this season been for you? And I know that's a hard question after a weekend like you've had and a week the last, but you know, overall, how much fun has this, has this been this season? They're a blast. Um, it, I, I told them after the, the Indiana game, most days I don't like them, but man, I love them. You know, <laughs> most days they drive me crazy, but I, I mean, man, I love them. Um, they're just fun. They, they, they work so hard. And, it, it, you know, we're not naive to our limitations. Like, we understand what we have and, you know, the, the cards we've been dealt. But, you know, sometimes you just got to play them. And, um, you know, it, it, I know we're sitting at 13 and 10, and it, it, it seems like, well, for me, man, it's been a long time. I, I don't know if I ever lost three games in a row, and I'm like, this one is crushing me. But it, this group fights every day, and they come to work every day for us. And, and they didn't have to. It, it's been less than 150 days that I've been a head coach mm -hmm. here. Um, most days the staff is still learning what I want on the fly. Yeah. You know, and um, this group, they just bought into us, and uh, they're fun. I don't like them, but I love them. Well, and, and, you know, you're always looking at the future. I know that your recruiting has been set up pretty well for the last couple of seasons or for the next couple of seasons. you still got a little bit of work to do. Uh, we talked the last week. It seems like uh, the way that the team is playing and the style they're playing is resonating with potential future recruits. Yeah. I, I mean, you would hope, right? Like, you would hope. Um, you know, we just uh, – the brand of basketball, what we're trying to do um, – you know, just get up and down the floor, fly around defensively. You know, we've got a long way to go. I mean, we're still learning defensive principles on the fly. And um, they're, they, they're just – they're locking in and, and buying into it. Um, you know, I wish we'd make more shots than we do. But, uh, you know, when, you, when you're playing such a different style than what you've been, been in um, for the last few years. And, um, man, it, it's – I know I said I don't like them, but I like them. Yeah, you do. You I do. do. I do. You, you, I mean, you see, I, I, have a, I have the best time on the sideline. It's, yeah. I've got the best job in the world, Tim. There you go. I, I'm the head coach at Purdue. Like, how cool is that? You know, how I've, cool is that? I, you know, I think Matt Painter has said the same thing. I think you all kind of like it back like, here I, at your I, alma mater. I, some days I told Alex this the other day. Like, I walk it out in the tunnel, and I'm just like, how is this my life? Like, I get to lead this program? I mean, this is, this is too cool. 
Uh, a question from Brianna. We did talk a little bit about Shea, I think, in last week's show. Rashea Kyle's been trying to rehab, and she suffered a little bit of a foot uh, setback with her foot. Uh, question, is she redshirting this year? First of all, I don't even know if she can qualify for a redshirt, but what is her latest status? Um, <laughs> Jess? <laughs> Jess, the, the Jess the trainer, <laughs> who, just, who I saw as soon as this question came and just started to slide down. She just down turned so her back would, to us, right? Yeah, Jess has been yeah, a rock star for us. Yeah. Uh, Jess's ability to get Madison back after what she did at Nebraska with her ankle, um, you know, is big time. But, uh, and, you know, Jess and I worked through a lot of those ankle sprains through through my career together, but... Um, actually, you know, Shay's back in the boot on, on crutches, but um, if there's an opportunity for, for Shay to, to play basketball this year, we don't want to we don't want to put her in a position where she has to have surgery in the mm -hmm. off season. So it's really just how is this bone healing um, and what and what is happening with it. So the answer is I have no idea. Um, I wish I did. You know, you know, I know you guys are asking, and I want to I want to give you all answers, but I just don't know. Uh, another question before we go to the next break, and it has to do with recruiting. Are you going to be looking in the transfer portal at this point, or where are you in, in terms of that right now for next season? Um, I think it's just, you know, I, I, it's, it's a yes and no kind of thing. I think that's the world we live in. Um, we live in this world where, you, you know, you have opportunities to get kids from the portals, but um, I just I love what we're building. I love the kids we have coming in. I love the kids that have committed to us. Um, you know, I love – you know, which is what we're trying to build. And, um, you know, if you do go that way, I just, you got to make sure you, you do your homework, right? You got to, you got to make sure you, you do your homework. And if there's any red flags and you don't want those kids in your program. Yeah. It is hard to build continuity when you build your program on these trends. And you're seeing a lot of schools that have the revolving door, a lot of players in, a lot of players and out. I mean, look at Matt, like they, they, don't, they don't have a, they don't have a transfer. Right. right. I mean, I know he's been here for, for, you know, I mean, he's the goat, right? 400 wins. I mean, that, that guy's the real deal. And, what they're doing, um, I don't know if it's anybody's bedtime, but 9 p.m. sounds like a great time to watch them <laughs> whoop Illinois' butt tomorrow. There you go. Well, I think we're going to be up for that one. Uh, we'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union right after this. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. With five falls, and we see Lowry with an early takedown for the Boilermakers. Outside single for Lyon, and he gets the two on short time. Here in the second period, just three seconds left. Panola, a good combo takedown there. Ten seconds remain. The Boilermakers looking to take the lead into the break. Panola with a beautiful throw by, takedown. Nearly had a throw to the back. Instead, he will get his 7-2 lead and now an 8-2 win over Foy. He's now, still not letting it go. He's not, and McKee now sprawling away from it with the opposite leg. Schroeder using leverage to work the man back to the mat. Now drives forward with his shoulder. 40 seconds to go here in the first. No score yet, and there's two for Devin Schroeder of McKee. And Schroeder with the two count, the three and four near fall points for Devin Schroeder. He's got a... Oh, beautiful inside trip there by McKee. Somehow Schroeder stayed out of trouble as he immediately goes to, drops to the ankle, now lifts. 25 seconds left. Schroeder trying to get some points here. Schroeder has that left leg trapped. The crowd's wanting the two. They're finally. begging for it. They finally gave it to him. So another takedown by Schroeder, and he will take the decision here at 125 pounds. A great win for the super senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 8-3 in favor of Devin Schroeder here on senior day. Good double there by Phileas. His first offense of the day is... Phileas does a nice job diving to the ankles after that great shot by Polanco. And now part Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. The Boilermakers and the Penn State Lady Lions on Wednesday night. That'll be a 7 o'clock start, 6.45 airtime. Um, I want to talk a little bit about there are so many people that are involved with the basketball program. We know about assistant coaches. We know about players, the people that, uh, everybody sees on game night. You've talked Jess Lipset, best trainer we've got out there. 
Uh, she's got her family here tonight, and we're happy to have them along with us. And she's done a great job throughout a, a many years of keeping players healthy. But you have so many people from a conditioning standpoint, from a from a health and nutrition standpoint, and, and I think of how much the game has changed in the 30 years plus since I started, the support staffs have grown and the support for student athletes has grown exponentially. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's night and day from, from when I was here, and I don't think I was here that long ago, Tim. Um, no, you weren't. Thank you. We're going to go with that. Thank you, Tim. Gonna, no, on. no, no, we are going to go with that because that means I haven't been here that long. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but, no, you know, obviously, you know, Jay-Z over there um, is, is a rock star in the training room. Jason in the weight room, you know, he's got people working with us, too, you know, in, in his family. And he, he, then we have a nutritionist. Um, there's so many people I don't even know where to start. Some days I'm like, I, who who was smart enough to put me in charge of all these people? Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, they've just done a really good job of, you know, making sure I'm, I'm supported, uh, but our, our student athletes are supported. And they're rock stars. But you do bring up another point there. And people talk about the transition going, in your case, from NAI to, to NCAA Division One basketball. And you've said basketball is basketball. I think that one of the biggest differences is this is a lot bigger staff that you have to manage at this level. Yeah, I don't even know how many people are on the staff. It, you know, quite frankly, it's just, you know, it, no, they're, they're awesome. It's, in, in all honesty, Beth has been a rock for me. Um, you know, when, when all this happened and, you know, I came in as – uh, you know, in the, for this transition, you know, I really thought coach was going to, you know, be able to, to, to have the opportunity to do that. And when when she decided to step down and, and I took over, uh, Beth has just been an absolute rock for me. She's my neighbor. I, you know, she lives three doors down. Her office is three offices away. And I think I spend more time with her than I do anybody else in the entire world. And she has been an absolute rock. You know, another person I do want to mention, Christine Benner's done a great job wow. for us. Uh, you're kind of filling in this year as a director of basketball operations. And people, you want to talk about an unloved and un, un, underappreciated uh, position. Try managing the travel during basketball yeah, season, especially when the snow starts to fly. Yeah, she's awesome. And, you know, then you add in um, – you know, the, we've only had the one game, obviously, rescheduled with the Big Ten um, and then the weather with Northwestern. But things constantly changing, you know, like whether I'm on the phone with the Big Ten or Christine is doing something behind the scenes, you know, changing flights or, um, you know, figuring out when Northwestern is getting here, when can we practice all those things. Um, you know, she's been she's been awesome. And it was funny this morning. You know, I think Beth and I were in the office this morning and Christine comes in and she's like, gosh, you guys look so tired. And, like, it's February, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's a long season, and she made the comment of, I didn't know that, because now she's traveling with us this year. She had right. never traveled before. Yeah. She's like, now I understand why you guys look the way you do in <laughs> February, and I don't know. I mean, thanks for the compliment. Thanks, for thanks, Christine. But the other thing you can always appreciate about somebody like Christine, always a smile on her face, always, always upbeat. Always, always. It doesn't matter if we win or we lose. Um, she is always the the... the you know, she, just the smile in the morning just is, is amazing. Well, thankful for your team, thankful for your staff, and this ship is going in the right direction. I, uh, I'm blessed. All right, we'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this. Ava Learn will join us after the break. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Cool. Purdue's got great tradition. It's, it's a great basketball state. It's a great basketball conference. There's just like, so many good things. You know, if you haven't, like, come to Mackey Arena and, and experienced that right there, that happens all the time. That just doesn't happen when Purdue plays Michigan. Like, we sold out our exhibition game. Like, it's a, it's a great experience for fans, but it's just, you know, just lucky to be a part of it as a player and as assistant coach and as a head coach. There, there's a lot of good things going on at Purdue. is not <laughs> has to be big because he has a big head <laughs> that's a pretty good start ah. i'm locked in right now Woo. dude this is so bad bro, what? bro i used to hate art class can't rush perfection that's what i think having trouble on the eyebrows what would you grade your art skills caleb a plus this might be the ugliest drawing <laughs> ain't got no eyes i think mine was yours is horrible <laughs> mine looks mad it's not my cup of tea. 
See, like, yours is, like, angry. Mine's happy to be a Boilermaker. You got a basketball in the middle of your, that guy's body. That's what I got. No disrespect to you, Pete, but my drawing skills aren't the best. I play basketball for a reason. I don't do this. It is time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Not a lot of activity in the last week. The only player who saw action was KK Hauser, and her team in Poland pulled out a win, 76 to 74, to improve to three and 11 on the season. KK had 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists in the game. She's averaging just under 12 points with 4 rebounds and nearly 5 assists per game for her team in Poland. And again, they're getting toward the end of their regular season, getting toward the playoffs uh, in Europe. And so we'll hopefully have some more uh, results to pass along next week. We have a special guest tonight, Ava Learn, a freshman on this basketball team from Hyde Park, New York, which she told me is about, what, an hour and a half north of New York City? Yes. Although yep. your family has moved a little bit closer to the city. Yep, yep, yep. Do you have a new, uh, we're going to find out here, New York accent, have you, has anybody mentioned or talked to you about, you sound like you're from the East Coast at all? Um, no, not really. I was actually on my phone with my best friend and like, I can't remember who said it, but they were like, are you sure you're from New York? Because, like, she sounds like she's more from New York than you do. And so yeah, no one I, has really said anything. I don't hear the accent. I, although if I do get a forget about it, I'll understand that where you're, where you're from here. <laughs> yeah. um, what brought you out here? Um, honestly, I really wanted to, like, get out of New York just because I wanted to see the world and stuff. And so I just really liked... Purdue and I actually had tournaments here with my AAU team and I just love the state because of like the farmlands and like my grandparents live on a farm so it was kind of like oh look farms <laughs> and stuff like that so that was very comforting to know like that was around me and also just like the program is what really drew me into. Two sisters right? Yes. And yep. where are you in the pecking order? I'm the oldest. Okay, so you got to boss everybody around <laughs> and try yeah. to serve as the good example. <laughs> yeah. uh, were, your, were your sisters also athletes growing up? Um, the youngest one is, but the middle one's more into, like, theater and, like, cheerleading and stuff like that. Besides basketball, were there other sports that you were playing in high school? Um, in high school, no. No, but I did do dance growing up. And so that was really the only thing. Oh, uh, now what kinds of dance? What would we see you do out of the court? <laughs> I actually did ballet for about 10 years. Really? Yes. Did that help you with your basketball footwork? Um, I would say so. Definitely sometimes my parents are like, you look like you're doing like a pirouette out there on the basketball court when I'm about to like fall on my butt or something like that. <laughs> you fall gracefully. Uh, can, can you still get up on your toes? Um, yes. Not really? all, but not, I don't usually try, but like, I would say so, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your high school career, the team you played on, uh, some success. I, I saw the record of your team, I had, yeah. you know, had a lot of wins. Uh, tell me about the kind of competition you played against in high school. Um, the competition was definitely very difficult. Um, the team itself was honestly just so much fun because I was all my best friends growing up, and so we, like, moved throughout it, and it was just so much fun, and the competition was very hard. Actually, um, we played against, like, um, Sonia Citron from, uh, who's at Notre Dame right now. She was our nemesis, per se. Yes. <laughs> so she was one of our toughest competitions, but everyone else was always tough, and it was just, it was Fun but difficult at the same time because everyone knew everyone, so yeah. Now, you said you had been to Indiana for tournaments, and uh, so you were a little bit familiar with the countryside. Was there anything that surprised you when you came out here to finally go to school last fall? Um, I would say the wind. It's super windy here, yeah. and it's, it's like a year-round thing. It would, it would be like, oh, it's supposed to be like 90 degrees, but it'll feel like 80 degrees because of like all the wind and stuff like that. But the snow shouldn't bother you. I mean, you used to have, I'm sure you had used a lot of oh, snow yeah. back where you oh, are. Oh, I love it. I love the snow. I actually trying to get Ricky and Cass to come do Snow Angels with me, and they haven't done it yet, so. 
Well, maybe if you dance out into the snow, they'll follow you out that way. All right, we're going to talk a lot more with Ava about this season and going forward when we come back from our break. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Seven on the shot clock, back to Harden. Now top here's Layden. Now they go inside. Learn gets away from the defense, and scores one. and draws. Of that, and she did a good job of just staying focused and getting the and one. Once again, the Boilermakers are at the line for an and one. Jayla Smith back to Brooke Moore. Moore stops. She's covered up by Satterwhite. Gets it to Ellis. Ellis driving. Ellis with a tough runner on the way, and she got the bounce. Okay. Abby Ellis. Brooke Moore. Moore fires a three. Got it. Brooke Moore with a triple. Shaw. Pass deflected, and this time it's picked up by Abby Ellis. Ellis coming down one-on-one -on -one against Rainey. Spins inside, goes up with a scoop shot, and scores. Gets it back to Layden. Layden has yet to score in this one. Madison throws right side to Ellis. Ellis drives with seven to shoot, puts up a floater, and scores. Addery back the other way. JT stops. Throws back off to Harden. Open three. In rhythm. Yes. There we go. Cassidy Harden with the triple. That's 23. She has the ball tipped away by Learn. Here's Janae Terry the other way. Good Terry, wall up. To, yes, it was. Terry in the right side to Layden, back off to Jayla Smith. Her three in the air, good. Jayla Smith with a triple. In rhythm. 60 to 41, Cats on top. They throw it inside. This is Janae Terry. Terry on the left side, and Smith will try it again. Yes, six in a row. Jayla Smith with another trip. Their lead. Here's Terry with it. Terry. Dump down pass to Layden, who lays it up and in. Defense back, it's it's pretty much a two on the other end very quickly. Third assist of the game for Burton, and the basket by Hartman gets her in double figures. As there's a three-pointer by Madison Layden. Veronica Burton, 22 points, 19 here in the second half. And I think you're right. I think, except for one three-pointer, Smith goes to the other end and scores all layups. Almost got a steal, and now here's a long pass down, and Cassidy Harden does intercept the pass. Harden back the other way, long pass off to Madison Layden. Layden with a minute 38 to play out top to Harden for a deep three that's good. In there where they just weren't taking great shots and uh, get, not getting good looks. And just because both teams have to play on Sunday. Yeah. Here's Harden in the corner, Layden. She fires an open three and hits. Madison Layden has scored 10, eight here in the fourth quarter. Dribbles through it. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Uh, we've got a lot of screens on right now. We're watching a game in the Big Ten. The only game in the Big Ten tonight, Ohio State and Rutgers. And they're down to the last few seconds right now. Ohio State holding a 57-56 lead. And it looks like the uh, Buckeyes are at the free throw line with 24.2 to play. So we'll keep you updated on that one. Let's talk about this season. I, I think Ava Learn captured a lot of people's attention before you got a lot of playing time because you are, I think, setting the tone for enthusiasm on the bench. Is that just your your natural state to, of excitedness during a basketball game? Um, I think it's my natural state, and I also think it has to do with all the coaches that I've had growing up. They've always been about, like, if you're not cheering, you'll be on the line doing suicides or stuff like that. So it's definitely, like, ingrained in me and probably also part of my, my personality. Well, as you came in, I'm sure you kind of sized up where you were with the other your other teammates. In order to get on the floor, what did you feel like you really had to work on here early in your freshman year? Um, honestly, I feel like for me, I definitely had to work on my shot. And I also feel like I had to work on like the little things like making sure that I box out and rebound because those have always been like a big deal for me and like things that I really want to do for the team, like any team I've ever been on. And so like, I like coming in, like I knew they had the scores that they had Madison cast, like they had all those and I knew that like, probably wouldn't be the next shooter or anything like that. So definitely like the little things of just hustling and like rebounding and stuff like that. You know, basketball has gone more and more to a positionless sport. You know, it used to be you had one and through five and everybody had their, you're listed as a guard on the roster, but you've had to play a lot of the post. Do you consider yourself a guard, a forward, both or neither? <laughs> um, I would definitely say both because coming in, I definitely thought I was going to be a guard, but then I like just saw that there were so many other guards and I was also didn't realize really how tall I was until I got here. Like Ricky definitely gave me reality check. But um, I would say that I'm both, but right now the team has me as a post and I feel like I'm doing a really good job of helping the team out in that. You, you've had a chance to play both with 8,000 fans screaming for you and 8,000 sc fans screaming against you. Talk about those atmospheres and how they get you excited on the court. Um, definitely the per when we were at Purdue, that was insane. I love that so much. I just love that energy. Like that's part of the 
one of the reasons I love basketball so much is just the fans. And it's crazy how they can all cheer for you and then you can go right to Indiana and have that same exact amount of people and them being like booing at you. And so I feel like it's definitely something that affects me, but I'm working on it. And I feel like it's just such an amazing thing to be able to play in. You know, the, the other thing I think a lot of freshmen underestimate because their high school seasons tend to be a lot shorter. I mean, right now in Indiana, we're playing in the tournament. You still got three weeks left of the regular season, then the Big Ten tournament, and then hopefully more basketball yeah. after that. Um, have you been able to keep yourself mentally and physically charged throughout the entire season? Um, I would like to think I am. Um, it's definitely been a challenge for sure. Like this season's crazy long, but um, I feel like I'm doing the best that I can. I'm going to Jess and doing all that I can, and hopefully I like to think I'm eating right, but probably not. <laughs> uh, let's talk about off the court. You are an elementary education major, right? I actually or am. Or did you have you switched? I'm in exploratory right now, okay. but I think I'm going to go back to the education, but be secondary okay so but yeah figuring that out so do te you think teacher coach what what's what's down the road after basketball whatever um, that will be I definitely have had the thought of like being a teacher so that I'm able to coach but I also really want to travel abroad after college and so being able to be like a teacher and like teach like English and then I don't know like way back when when I like didn't realize how crazy good everyone was I thought possibly playing overseas but I don't think I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> so the, being a coach does sound very appealing to me. I don't know how Coach Katie does it, though, so don't think I could do college. <laughs> um, I think you've made a lot of your teammates laugh and smile. Who makes you laugh the most on this basketball team? Who do you think is your funniest teammate? Who is the funniest teammate? Oh, geez. Um... That's a tough one. <laughs> I always have to end on a tough question. You yeah, know. I'll say it's tied between Madison and Ricky. Okay, Not the, because they're sitting right there. The, Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. I, I kind of figured that. They're, they're sitting right there. Yeah. Well, Ava, it's been, it's been fun to watch you progress throughout the year, and we can't wait to see you finish out your freshman year and have a great career after that. So uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us when we come back. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. This is about five, six rebounds per game. She's really been able to step Arden up. Arden drives in, in, off the glass and in. On the floor quickly, Ellis not wasting any time. And the up and under, off the glass. So Abby Ellis can really put the ball on the floor. There he's got to go here, working on more. McNeil, the up and under. Oh, crafty from Indiana, the true freshman. Terry finds a seam in the lane, off the glass. 20, we got a dandy early. In this Big Ten rivalry between Indiana and Purdue, Ali Papper, oh, a no-look past the goal, but it was blocked by... Yeah, thanks, Gwen. It was Tiramisu, Tiramisu, and I'm just a little disappointed we didn't get any. It's not yeah. good. St. Louis. Terry hands off to Woltman. She'll finish that time. Second more McNeil. Oh, what a bounce past the goal, babe, but blocked. Oh, my. Oh, Smith came oh. out of nowhere to reject Golbey. Trying for the third straight season to sweep the Boilers. Open three is good. Jayla Smith from downtown. Averaging eight three-pointers per game, fourth in the Big Ten. Speaking of threes, Brooke Moore from way downtown. Just lob it outside. It's a really good move. Inside and the foul. Abby Ellis taking the contact. Purdue is not quitting. They will not quit. A lot of fight. What an athletic move. Have to try to mount a Purdue comeback. She'll try and contest it. Three and hit. Brooke Moore heating up. Two threes, ten points now. Yes. Why couldn't you start the one of the games at a, at a different time? I don't know. Ellis, nice move to get some space, and she hits. You just have to hope that you don't have. Terry driving in. Couldn't fought finish. Moore left open again. She hesitates, but hits Brooke Moore from downtown. Oh, they left her wide open again. I don't know what Indiana's guards are doing. They keep on leaving her open. She's the best three-point Back at Wolfie's Grill with the head coach. He was just watching the Rutgers-Ohio State game. Rutgers was down two with a couple of seconds left and tried to miss a free throw so they could get a rebound. And instead of the ball hitting the rim, it hit the backboard, which means that the ball goes over to Ohio State. And we were just talking during the break, uh, the coach and I, about how, how often can you work 
on special situations like that, like trying to get fouls late in the game when you're down a couple. Uh, you know, I, there's so many things to do, but how much are you able to work on those, those kind of special situations? Um, you absolutely need to work on those. Um, and just because we've been together so, for such a short amount of time, those are, those are the things that we really haven't had the opportunity to work on. Um, I think you got, I think y'all see a couple of them. Like we got a couple of special jump ball plays, um, you know, at the start of games where we've been able to steal a couple of points on them. Uh, you know, but you absolutely have to work on them. You, 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 you know, we we have a call like when we've got a foul to give in transition to make them take the ball out of bounds, so so they're not getting something. But you know, just our youth and and us being together for such a short amount of time and just language, we're still learning each other. All right, let's talk about your first opponent this week, and that's Penn State coming up on Wednesday night. They lost at home yesterday to Northwestern. McKenna Marisa, though, one of the top scorers in the Big Ten, and uh, they've got a number of role players on that team. Again, we saw last year when they came to Mackey, the teams traded Williams on the other team's court last year, but they came in last year, and some of their role players had huge nights. Yeah, they, I mean, they can really score the basketball, they, and they do. They want to they outscore you. <coughs> Excuse me. They... Um, Man, Marissa can light it up. Mm -hmm. She's crafty with it. She can, she can play behind the ball screen with you and put put you in a position where, um, you know, you just kind of on your heels and, you know, you know maybe Abby gets on matched up on her a little bit, but just making sure we own that. You know, like making sure we we try to dictate. Um, you know, easier said than done when you got a kid that 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 shoots it so well and shoots it so much. I mean. You look at their box score. She's taking 240 more shots than the next person. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we got to make sure we do a good job on her, but we can't let anybody else beat you. And at the same time, we've got to be able to, we got to be, we got to be able to make some shots and give ourselves a chance to win, to win the basketball. Yeah, game. I think it was it was Anna Camden last year that came in and hit two or three big three pointers in that game. And but, but it, the game at State College was a track meet, and Purdue wound up winning that one just before Christmas. So it was a weird season. Uh, last year was a weird season period, but especially a weird series with Penn State. Yeah, and you know, Tim, we we want to play fast, right? Like we want to get out and transition and, and play p fast, and, and so do they. Um, but we don't want it to be, we don't want it to be a track meet. You know, we want to be able to, to to make them play at our pace, and um, because if it does become a track pace, uh, a track meet, that's not that's not really who we are, and, and mm -hmm. you know we don't we just we just can't keep up with that. Um, but we've got to be able to grind things out defensively and slow them down in transition and make them work for things, um, and just make sure the basketball game the basketball game is played at our pace. The original schedule had you off on Super Bowl Sunday, but because Wisconsin had COVID issues right after Christmas, that game was rescheduled. It's going to be played on Sunday at four o'clock. Julie Pospisilova, one of the top shooters in the Big Ten, will be uh, leading their offense. Now, I don't know if, uh, what the situation is. Their second scorer, Sydney Hilliard, is out right now with personal reasons. We don't know what her absence is going to be, but they came up with a big win yesterday over Illinois. Yeah, um, you know me. I haven't moved on to I understand. Guys. I haven't moved on to those guys, but I'm not disappointed about playing on Super Bowl Sunday because the Chiefs aren't playing, so it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I am disappointed that they're not playing, but it's okay that I'm not going to – I'm not going to see the game. We can be in misery together. We we are. I gave you I gave you a hard time after that one. Yeah, and I, I, I think I was unusually kind to you after the Chiefs. You loss. were. You were. And I mean that was a that was a bad day. We lose in Nebraska and then the Chiefs blow a twenty one to three lead. Ouch. Um, but y you know y you go on a road. You play in a, in a gym that's cold, right? Mm -hmm. Under an yes, ice it rink. is. It's a cold. It's a cold place. Um, they had a really good crowd this past weekend, and Marissa has done a really, really good job. Um, you know, she was kind of thrown into the fire, too, and um, I, I wouldn't say it, it's not going to be too long before she gets that place right again. Yeah, when she says, uh, coach says cold, they have an ice surface. It's kind of like at uh, Ohio State and a couple other arenas we go to. They they put the plastic covering over, but you better have your, your warm socks on because your feet will be like uh, like ice they will at the be, end of the game. Uh, make sure I, I have the, the appropriate Jordans over there on the <laughs> sideline, but... Uh, I'm a big fan of the Cole Center. Oh, I love it. It's one of my favorite arenas, really. Yeah. It's a, a, and Well, because you scored 41 oh, points. Oh, I, I, I wasn't saying that, Tim. Nah, I'm just a big, no, no, no. I get <laughs> I'm just it. a big fan of the Cole Center. S school record set <laughs> in the Cole Center. All right, we'll have our final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. Right after this, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. With five falls, and we see Lowry with an early takedown for the Boilermakers. Outside single for Lyon, and he gets the two on short time here in the second period. Just three seconds left. Panola, a good combo takedown there. 
10 seconds remain. The Boilermakers looking to take the lead into the break. Panola with a beautiful throw by takedown. Nearly had a throw to the back. Instead, he will get his 7-2 lead and now an 8-2 win over Foy. He's yeah. still not letting it go. He's not, and McKee now sprawling away from it with the opposite leg. Schroeder using leverage to work the man back to the mat. Now drives forward with his shoulder. 40 seconds to go here in the first. No score yet, and there's two for Devin Schroeder of McKee. And Schroeder with the two count, the three and four near fall points for Devin Schroeder. He's got a... Oh, beautiful inside trip there by McKee. Somehow Schroeder stayed out of trouble as he immediately goes to, drops to the ankle, now lifts. 25 seconds left. Schroeder trying to get some points here. Schroeder has that left leg trapped. The crowd's wanting the two. They're finally. begging for it. They finally gave it to him. So another takedown by Schroeder, and he will take the decision here at 125 pounds. A great win for the super senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 8-3 in favor of Devin Schroeder here on senior day. Good double there by Phileas. His first offense of the day is... Phileas does a nice job. This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more at PurdueFed.com. Before we get to the game plan, I, you know, we talked about unseen and un, underappreciated people. We wanted to congratulate uh, Ian McDougal and his wife, Rachel, because uh, remember last week during our show, we said that uh, she, Rachel was in the hospital ready to deliver. Well, it was a few hours afterward, early in the morning on Tuesday. They had their baby daughter, Adeline, and she's doing well, and Mom and Dad are doing well. We look forward to seeing them in here before yeah, too long. I can't wait to, to meet her. Um, she's just gorgeous. Um, Ian did a good job. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. Well, I think Rachel gave a lot of credit on that <laughs> no, one too. They, um, yeah. I can't. I'm so I'm so happy for them. Ian's gonna be a great girl dad, but you know, Addie J is just flat out gorgeous and. We'll just say that uh, she looks a lot like Rachel. All right, we're getting court toward uh, March. I mean, you can see it now. You can see it. It's right there. Three weeks from Wednesday, we start this Big Ten tournament. As you look toward these last six regular season games, biggest points of emphasis, besides playing hard and all those things, what do you want to see out of this team the next couple of weeks? Um, the same fight that, that you see when you're down 19 um, on the road against those guys. Um, those guys suck. That's the worst. <laughs> um, you know, it just uh, it, that's 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 the fight for 40 minutes. You know, that's the fight we have to have for 40 minutes, and um, you know, just this like sense of urgency that every single play matters, and that you know we it it, it can't be you know we're going into a game because and and we're supposed to win. It, we aren't supposed to win anything. Yeah. Um, let's be honest. Like yeah. we're just not, and and we've got to make sure we approach every single possession that way. Good luck this week. Let's get this thing back on the right track, and we'll have happy thoughts for next Monday night. Let's, let's do it, too. All right. Boilermakers with two games this week, taking on Penn State Wednesday night. We'll be on the air for that one at 645. That's a 7 o'clock start. And then Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday at Wisconsin. That one starts at 4 o'clock Eastern time from the Cole Center. We'll have that one at 345. We'll be right back here at Wolfie's next Monday night at 710. Speaking of underappreciated and unsung, our engineer, Wes Scott, and our producer, Roger Forsyth, keep us on the air every week. For the head coach and for Ava Learn, I'm Tim Newton. Thanks for tuning in. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield.